Okay. There you go. You know, your name, of where you come, where you came from, um, and your Country job. Ways. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> so, anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah, well, uh, um, uh, Constable Ojo, uh, last name of Tiwa Badi, and that name sounds uh, kind of uh, funny, but it's, uh, it's a Nigerian name. I'm from West Africa, Nigeria, and I came to Canada in 1972, and uh, I've always wanted to uh, be in the uh, force, and that was actually more reinforced when I came here. I met uh, two police officers, and the second day I arrived here, I got lost at uh, Queen and Young Street. And these two officers uh, came and they brought me home. And from that time, I said I was going to be a police officer. In uh, 1979, I became a police officer. And uh, I was, uh, I've done quite a lot of things, uh, undercover, all kinds of things like that. And then uh, about eight years ago, uh, one of my unit commanders, uh, uh, Staff Inspector Randall Monroe, uh, called me and uh, we had a meeting and they wanted to start a youth program. And they asked me if I would help out with it. And that's when we started uh, what is now called the uh, 13 Division Youth Outreach Program. And basically what it does is we try to go into the community uh, to help out uh, high-risk youth. These are mostly either kids that have been in trouble before with the police or kids that are from single parents, uh, broken homes, and uh, the whole idea is to try to help them out, to let them understand that although you may have committed a crime, but if you would uh, only get into this program or any other program with youth, um, at the end of four or five years, that record can be cleaned off if you do not continue to reoffend again, you know. And uh, we started this one, as I said, about eight years ago with a few parents. Uh, we started off with just playing basketball here at Fear Bank Middle School. And it has since mushroomed to partnership with uh, the, the British Methodist uh, Episcopal Church just north of where we are. And that church, as uh, we actually, or right now, we have approximately 40 working computers installed in that church. And we do some of our Saturday programs there. And they have seen Reverend uh, Morris Hicks. Uh, with uh, Reverend uh, Cyril Yearwood became partners with the police and we've been helping the youth in the community since then. And we have since gone from playing basketball to helping these kids with computers, helping them with their school homework because the theme of our program is stay in school and keep the peace. We are basically sponsored by uh, an organization called Pro Action and they operate out of uh, Truly Police for the College Street and they help us to pay for most of our uh, expenses and things like that. So, uh, but the key thing is that for any kid to be in this program, they have to stay in school, keep the peace, or at least gainfully employed. That's the key. And no matter what kind of problem they have, we try to address it. So we have since graduated from there, uh, one of our detectives, Detective Tony Charles, he has helped us to organize a soccer team. So we have a soccer team. Uh, we have uh, Reverend and Mrs. Sinch Royes of Prayer Outreach Ministry on Oakwood. They have helped us to start a music program. And we have uh, Master Warrant, Kayla Brown of the Canadian Armed Forces, Cadet Corps. She has helped us to start uh, a singing and dancing class. And we have a computer program here whereby we help uh, kids with, uh, with their resumes and things like that. We have uh, Reverend Olga Brown, who has been helping us. She's a, sci a child psychologist. She's been coming to help deal with some of the issues that we will not be able to deal with. So it, it's a community effort. And you may ask, uh, what does the police get out of it? Well, the chief of police uh, take on this is that uh, he feels that this is uh, the opinion that if we help these kids before they get bad, is actually cost effective for the community later on. So he's willing to go to whatever length it takes to help these kids now before they get bad. Uh, it's not a matter of just sending them to jail when they have committed the offense. And his take is on this is why don't you help them before they get their level? 
So that uh, and this program has um, has been extended, believe it or not, to places like Perry Sound, to places like uh, Tamizgamin, mm -hmm. and uh, with the RCMP and the OPP, and they have come to us and see how they can start their own program from our program. And uh, we've helped from this program, we've helped 23 divisions. We have helped 31 divisions. Uh, as I said, we are with the National Bay Police Force right now, police services, as you say, in uh, Perry Sound. And we are now helping approximately six different uh, Native Indian reserves from our program. So this, this, this program has proven successful then? It has been extremely very successful. As a matter of fact, we have been blessed in that we have now had about 16 to 17 youth from this program have become members of the Canadian Armed Forces. Oh, we wonderful. Have about three volunteers from this program have become truly police officers. So it has been a very, very Beautiful. Long, That's wonderful. Program. All these activities have been keeping you pretty busy, but then you have some personal uh, things that have happened. Uh, uh, regarding your daughter? Yeah, um, well, that is, um, that, that's like it's a personal thing that I try not to let a life to keep me down. I have a Chinese friend, an older Chinese friend that spoke to me once and he says to me that Ojo, I says, yes, sir, he says, what you cannot change, don't let it change you. And I mean, we all have our crosses to bear. Uh, 19, my daughter, the one that has, uh, she just came up with uh, sickness in 1996 with uh, kidney disease. Uh, this kid uh, is an excellent, excellent kid at school. And uh, we've been dealing with it since then, but the doctors have since advised us that uh, she'll have a better chance getting a kidney uh, donation transplant. But they also advised us, the doctors also advised us that uh, uh, live donor is always better than when they have to be on the waiting list, and as especially members of the family. So myself and a few other members of the family and friends, we all did all kinds of tests, and I found that uh, I am the most compatible. And of course, uh, what's even most uh, amazing is the fact that they actually, part of the test includes that I have to go see uh, someone for counseling. To, and the person that I saw spoke to me at length just to make sure that I, this is something that I want to do. And I only had one word for her that, look, when it's your child, you don't think about it, you just do it. I would do it for anybody, especially my own child. So um, we are hoping that sometimes in July of this year, God's willing, because uh, we as a Pentecostal, I'm also an ordained minister, so I believe very much in what God will can do and will do. Uh, however, uh, because he never uh, tell us what he's going to do the next minute, we still have to plan. So my planning is that sometimes in July, I will be giving my daughter one of my kidneys to make life much better for her. Can I ask you, uh, Ojo, how, how was it that you came to meet George? Well, um, every year for the last eight years, we've always had uh, what we call Police Appreciation Day. And uh, our partner in that event is uh, Mr. Freddie Masai, who is the owner and operator of uh, Freddie's No Frills at 243 Alberta Avenue. And uh, so while we were planning the event this year, you know, in the last few years that we've done the event, we've always uh, have all the proceeds go to either the Hospital for Sick Children or to uh, Camp Chumoke, which is a sickle cell uh, area uh, for kids with that disease. And uh, what it is is that um, when myself and Freddie were planning this particular event, then he mentioned to me that, oh, I do have a friend who also uh, wants to start some kind of uh, fundraising and I'd like you to speak to him. And I said, oh, sure. So, and, and he mentioned the name George Marcello. And uh, then I, when I met George, and uh, at first I thought that George was just somebody like myself who was just trying to help others. But then when we started talking and I found out that he himself has been a recipient of a liver transplant about two times already, then right away what he didn't realize was that by saying that to me, he uh, automatically boosted my 
a willingness to give my, my daughter my kidney right away that here is a hero who has done this and he's, instead of him just sitting around, he's saying, look, as long as there's any breath in me, I'm going to help as many as I can. And if that's not enough to uh, encourage anybody, I don't know what will. So right away I, I figured, well, I'm going to throw everything I have into this. And I spoke to my uh, unit commander, Staff Inspector uh, Richard Stubbins, and I mentioned George to him and I, I, I told him that this man is just an incredibly remarkable human being to have to go have gone through uh, two surgeries, transplants, and is devoting all of his time to helping others. I think we should uh, do everything we can in our power to help him. And his, his reply to me was, Ojo, right on, I'm willing to do whatever we can. And I also mentioned it to another staff inspector, David McLeod, and uh, uh, staff superintendent uh, Peter Slowly, and uh, Deputy Chief Kit Ford. I mentioned it to all of them that this man, you have to meet him. So they are all making arrangements to meet with George, and uh, so I'm, I'm willing to. Uh, I believe that uh, what George is doing with a step-by-step -step, uh, organ donor uh, transplant uh, association, I believe, is it? It's a wonderful thing, and uh, I, I think we all need to. Uh, it's, this is this is not a matter of whether you are black or white or Chinese or uh, whatever nation you come from. Any of us can become a a a a, 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 a victim that will need the uh, organ transplant tomorrow. And that's why it's so important that we throw everything we have, every support we have behind this organization step by step, just like we are doing right now with uh, Camp Chumoke, and uh, to, to make sure it becomes a success. The key thing is awareness, 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 because uh, donations will not come until people are aware, because as you know, um, people don't just go out <coughs> shoes or a car or a house, they buy the benefit of that car or the benefit of that shoe. And here is the only benefit that we can sell to people is the awareness of what George is doing. And that is just to make sure that they are aware of it. Once they know about it, I'm sure the support was will sky high. And I noticed you were mentioning to me the other day you're also an ordained minister. Yes, I am. Um, Apparently with my job, uh, you are constantly, constantly encouraged to educate yourself, to continue to educate yourself all the time. And uh, about four years ago, I, I decided that I want to go back to school. And also I went to Kanda Christian College and I took my degree in uh, theology. And I was ordained uh, in 2001 as a minister. And, uh, so now it's, it's kind of, uh, I, I, most of the time I devote my time to going to churches and community centers and speaking to youth. Uh, but what's so strange about it, in most, in most cases when I do go to church in uniform and they announce me as a guest speaker and they say that I'm an, I am also an ordained minister, I get that look all the time that, are you kidding me? A police officer, an ordained minister? What kind of an ordained minister? But then when I start speaking then, they know, oh, okay. Yeah. Ah, I see what you mean. So yes, I am a day minister. I, I do weddings, and, and uh, on the sideline, I'm also an electrician, and uh, I do tiling. I do all kinds of things. So I have no idea how many things I do. But I, whatever comes, I, I never run away from any challenge. I'll take it on. You sure are a busy fella. Just on, on a final thing, uh, if you can mention the date today and where we're at. Yeah, today is uh, the 26th of uh, May 2007. Uh, right now we are at Fairbank Middle School. This is where we uh, meet every Saturday for our program, for the basketball and the school programs. And today happened to be a special day. We have uh, groups from uh, Syracuse, New York come to play with our group. And uh, so that's so we thought we'd take a few minutes to do this interview to again create the awareness that we need for the for both Camp Chumoke and Step by Step uh, Organ Transplant Association. Great. Thank you. Well, Great. Joel, you sure are an inspiration to the community and to the people around you. And you sure are out of the way and God is using you as he sees fit. Thank you, Ojo. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thanks very much.
guy that's doing the camera beside so I don't know if get a chance to introduce yourself. He does most of the video recording for these events as well. Is he gonna be there?